Combat USA, bringing you MMA, looking state to state for the top eight here on prime time, putting it all on the line for this one chance, for this one moment to stand up and shine. Combat USA Fighting Championships. I'm your host Adam Sandoval and today with me I have MMA fan extraordinaire and licensed judge Mr. Phil Jackson. Phil, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Good. Thanks glad for having me today. Glad to have you here. Basically, we're here to talk today about the January 6th event at Oneida Casino in Green Bay, Wisconsin. But before we do that, let's talk a little bit more about last season, how it went, and uh, Combat USA and where we're headed. Sound good? Absolutely. All right, so uh, first of all, like we mentioned, last season Combat USA only happened in Wisconsin. We ran the tournament in Wisconsin as kind of a test market, just to see how the fan follow would be and uh, how, how people would be excited about the tournament format. How do you think that worked out for us? I think it worked out amazingly. Yeah, it was, it was great. Uh, you know, there's actually a report on Wisconsin Combat Sports. You guys can go there and check out uh, all the MMA action. And they had the uh, top 10 or eight moments of Wisconsin 2010 year. And uh, Combat USA ranked in number three, saying we struck gold as a promotion with our new concept and our, and our new format. Uh, came in second to two things. Uh, one, Anthony Pettis' head kick. Did you see that? Absolutely. I Unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, that, that is an impressive head kick. And two, uh, the state regulating the sport of mixed martial arts, which was huge. Um, that's a huge, huge milestone for the mixed martial arts community in Wisconsin. And uh, it opens a lot of doors for, for other promotions to come in and other things to happen. And I think it's going to do a lot for the fighters and for the fans in Wisconsin. I think so. The sport will be better off for it. Absolutely. So let's talk first about January 6th. Let's get into the 145 pound weight class. Uh, very excited for this weight class. This is probably one of the most stacked weight classes in the bracket, uh, according to online polls. And uh, I'm going to have to agree. What do you think? I think the 145ers work, uh, work very hard, put on a really good show. Well, on the top of the bracket, we've got Nick Aguilar, Morgan Sickinger, Chris Befura, and Josh Cassie. Nick Aguilar being the most noted uh, addition to the tournament here with a 23 and 6 record. Uh, fights with Bodog, uh, many many major organizations. The guy is an absolute animal. I think he's probably the favorite for the state to win. But uh, he's going to have to get through Morgan Sickinger and uh, whoever wins the Josh Cassie Chris Prefer fight that's happening January sixth. What do you think about Josh Cassie? I think Josh Cassie is a very good striker. He, he, striker. He fights out of uh, the Green Bay Dungeon. Mm -hmm. uh, he recently just came off a loss to Chase BB, who was a two-time uh, former two-time WBC champ. Yeah, Chase is a absolute animal that's when those guys that'll get out there and just just fight anybody so Josh did uh, just take that fall to him and uh, it's kind of an unfortunate thing for Josh but it's a good chance for him to feel what that next level competition is you know you go in and you fight a guy like a WC champion uh, you get in there you mix it up with him you get a good idea for where you're at and give you a good idea of what you need to work on and where you need to go to win a tournament like this absolutely so that's that's exciting, um, and and Chase Beebe also being in the Illinois roster at 145 pounds. So if Chase Beebe wins the Illinois bracket and Josh Cassie wins the Wisconsin side of the bracket in the regional finals between Illinois and Wisconsin, we're gonna have Chase Beebe Josh Cassie too rematch. That's an exciting thing. Absolutely. So, but they both got a long road ahead of them before they go there. I know the Illinois roster stacked, and uh, Josh has got a tough fight in front of him on January 6th, which is the Chris Buffera, and this guy. Fast. Uh, Chris Befura is fighting out of the next level MMA in Portage, Wisconsin. Yep. 
I've seen a couple of his fights, and he's very exciting. He is. He's an exciting fighter. The guy's got impeccable groundwork, I mean, uh, which is, you know, Josh Cassie's nightmare. Like you said, Josh Cassie's got great stand-up. Chris Buffera on the ground, scary thing. So the question is, can Josh Cassie keep it on a fight, or could Chris Buffera keep it on the ground? Well, it's a traditional striker versus grappler match. It is. And that's what a lot of us fans want to see. So what do you think is going to happen there? I'm rooting for Josh. <laughs> there you go, Josh. You got one, one, fan in a, one fan in the crowd already rooting for you, uh, but you can have your hands full here because Chris Buffera uh, is definitely going to bring his A game with a 10 and 4 record. Professionally, you know, that's countless who knows how many amateur fights underneath that. Uh, you know, that's a lot of experience for Josh to get in there and, and tangle it up with, uh, you know, yet again. Two tough fights in a row to row. I think it's important for Josh to come out on top on this one. Absolutely. But, uh, you know, it's important for Chris as well because if he makes this one, he gets to fight the winner of Nick and, and Morgan Sickinger. So. All right, let's move on to the 155-pound weight class. Uh, another very exciting weight class in this tournament. Uh, two Wisconsin favorites got brought into this year's 155-pound uh, weight class, and that is uh, James Warfield and Rob Roy being the two biggest names, I think, out there for Wisconsin that, that fans want to see. Uh, Warfield, an incredible, they call him the uh, unbreakable heavy hitter because this guy likes to come in and he likes to swing and swing hard. And uh, Rob Roy, as we all know, is... Uh, Former WEC fighter. Former WEC fighter. You've been competing on that level. You know you're going to be bringing the A game. Very exciting. Now, these two guys have uh, very bad blood. They actually uh, have a exchanged a lot of words online, and they uh, were slotted to fight each other earlier this year, and unfortunately, that fight wasn't able to happen. So um, a lot of MMA fans out there in Wisconsin looking to see James move on and Rob move on and uh, meet up in the state finals. But in order for that to happen, Mr. Uh, Rob Roy has to beat Mr. Dennis Anderson. What do we know about Dennis? Uh, Dennis is actually fighting uh, from Madison, the chosen few. He's a 10 and three record, which is pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. I think it'll be good competition. Absolutely, you know, uh, Rob Roy out of Racine, Wisconsin, training with ACS. Uh, that's also with, you know, Nick Aguilar, Gerald Mearshart from the last season's champion, uh, Javier Vega won last season training out of ACS. These guys come and they, and they come hard. Uh, they, they train very well. You know, you'll notice looking through this bracket, you'll see some gyms have a more of a dominant presence in the, in the state Wisconsin bracket. It's because those gyms have been around a long time and they've been training top level fighters for a long time. And it brings them right to the top of the charts. And as we know, Combat USA is only going to put the best fighters in here. And that's what you're going to see from uh, ACS. You're going to see top level fighters. Should be a great show. Absolutely. Dennis Anderson uh, from Madison, Wisconsin, training out of Chosen Few. Now, Chosen Few is another gym, unfortunately, did not bring home any championship, championship rings last year or any big, huge paychecks, but uh, they do provide top-tier fighters. They had a lot of guys in the tournament. Um, they're, they're an impressive camp. Uh, Pat O'Malley, uh, former uh, UFC fighter, Ron Faircloth. They got, uh, they got strong guys over there. So uh, it should be an interesting fight, Dennis Anderson and Rob Roy. De Rob Roy being 19-5, and five, Dennis Anderson being 10-3. and three. What do you think about that matchup? I think it'll be exciting. I think it's one of the most exciting fights that uh, are going to happen that night. I think a lot of people are looking forward to that. And uh, if Rob Roy moves on, there's a good chance of that grudge match. If Dennis Anderson moves on, well, he's an exciting fighter across the board. Absolutely. So you're going to see some good things there. Uh, let's take this moment to go check out our commercial break, check out some of our sponsors, and we'll be right back to continue with the 2011 Wisconsin's Season Brackets. Four Ounce Fight Gear, official sponsor of Combat USA. Developed for the fighters, by the fighters. Engineered specifically for today's top MMA fighters. It's not what you want, it's what you need. That's what I need. This is what I need. For more info, check us out at 4OunceFightGear.com. Bringing it four ounces at a time. Welcome back to Combat USA, where we are MMA. I'm at your host, Adam Sandoval, and with me is Mr. Phil Jackson. We uh, just got done talking about the 145 and 155 pound weight class for the state of Wisconsin. Absolutely. And uh, I think Wisconsin's going to bring it. I think so. <laughs> Let's start out with talking about Mr. Lenny Nelson. He won all of his three fights last season within one minute and 30 seconds, finishes fights prominently. He does, man. All of his fights he won due to strike, which is an exciting thing. And with his last fight, he won the championship title, Combat USA championship title. Took home a big fancy diamond ring. Took home $10,000 <laughs> in cash. 
uh, makes for a happy man. Another really thing, exciting thing for Lenny here is just like uh, NFL, uh, soccer, hockey, you know, you win a title in Combat USA, you're not just a defending champion. I don't have to just fight again to be a two-time champion. In Combat USA, you have to work your way back up every year. Just like winning a Super Bowl. You don't win a Super Bowl one year and then just have to play one game to defend it next year. You win a Super Bowl this year, you want to be a two-time Super Bowl champion, guess what? You start over at the bottom and you work your way to the top again. Try to get that Super Bowl ring for two times. And that's exactly how Combat USA is set up this year, which makes it exciting. So, Lenny Nelson's going to be in this mix looking for a repeat. Absolutely he will be. What do you think his odds are? I wouldn't want to put numbers on it. I think <laughs> they're very good. I think his odds are good as well, man. The guy's an incredible, credible athlete. But he's going to have to fight Bobby Galvin. Uh, Galvin's very scrappy. Um, he's got a very good sprawl, and he's really good on, on his feet. He's got such a fast scramble. I mean, this guy, anytime you put him in any type of position, he scrambles so fast and tries to get in the best position possible, and he seems to be very good at that. So, and training out of uh, ACS... You know, again, back to the gym. You got a, a very, very powerful, prominent gym there. Training with guys like that, you got to say he's got to be ready to bring it. Absolutely, he will be. And, uh, you know, Lenny Nelson training out of Fond du Lac with Unified Martial Arts has some great fighters coming out of that gym, too. Not only is there Lenny Nelson, but there's also uh, Bivens and uh, Whisper Goodman is now training out of Unified Martial Arts and Fond du Lac. Absolutely. So, and there's another big, powerful, strong guy. So, they're both training with tough, strong guys. It, it'll be interesting to see which guy uh, comes out on top. Absolutely. When you train with hard guys, uh, it only makes you stronger. That's a fact. Now at 185 pounds, Phil, we've got uh, four very impressive top bracket guys. Gerald the Machine Mearshart, Dallas O'Malley, Will the Franchise Dickey is making a return, and uh, Whisper Goodman. That should be a very good fight. Will Dickey and Whisper Goodman. Will Dickey and Whisper Goodman is going to be an exciting fight. Uh, you know, Will Dickey made it to the finals last year, came up a little short against Caleb Nelson, and uh, Caleb Nelson was in this year at 185, but uh, due to some injuries, had to withdraw from the tournament. And the uh, other finalist from last year would be Will Dickey, and he filled the spot. Well, sometimes one person's loss is another person's gain. And that would be the case in this situation Absolutely. for Mr. Dickey. But let's talk about January 6th, because January 6th is going to be what it's all about when the 2010 champion, Gerald Mearshart, returns. He has to defend, uh, he has to win this fight against Dallas O'Malley, which is uh, Pat O'Malley's son. So apparently fighting is in the blood with the O'Malley family out there in Madison, Wisconsin. <laughs> so uh, Dallas O'Malley, a uh, very, very, uh, very well-noted wrestler. I mean, yeah, the, guy, the guy's got wrestling pedigree uh, on top of wrestling pedigree. And uh, he's going to have to go up against Gerald Mearshart, which, you know, what do you got to say about Gerald? Uh, well, Gerald actually is the title holder. Uh, he fought Sam Alvey last year. Sam was the Wisconsin favorite. Mearshart pulled it out. Yeah, Sam had uh, an incredible record. He had only lost, I think it was like 10-1 and one at the time. His only loss was to like Caleb Nelson. He had beaten everybody. I don't know how many knockouts the Sam Elvey guy has. And uh, they went in there and they, they fought all the way down their fifth round. And uh, I think there's like 30 seconds left or something. We can pull up the footage, but uh, I think 30 seconds left and, and Gerald pulled out a submission. Absolutely. The fight looked like it was going one way, but oftentimes a submission will finish a fight. Changes just like that. Uh, Gerald is a submission expert. I mean, this guy, early in his career, did nothing but submission after submission after submission. Often wondered about his striking ability, and uh, he showed that against uh, Ron Faircloth in the semifinals last year uh, down in Madison, Wisconsin. He fought UFC veteran Ron Faircloth and striked the whole time and found his range, found his distance. His timing was impeccable. I mean, long range, he strikes. You can get on uh, our Facebook. Combat USA is on Facebook. It's just go to facebook.com slash combat USA. Go into the photos. You can pull up pictures from any event. And uh, in there, you will find the pictures from uh, Gerald Mearshart versus Ron Faircloth. And let me tell you, there are some head kicks. There are some strikes that just look <laughs> devastating. But uh, back to January 6th, I think uh, Gerald Mearshart is definitely going to be the fan favorite. Uh, but Dallas O'Malley's in there. He's got something to prove. 7-1 record. He's only lost one time. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how he does against a, a Class A fighter like Gerald Mearshart. Absolutely. I'm really looking forward to that fight. Yeah, it's going to be a good fight. Um, and that is going to be it for the January 6th fights. Uh, we're going to run to a commercial break one more time here. Check out our sponsors. And as always, Combat USA, we are MMA. See you in a second. Four Ounce Fight Gear, official sponsor of Combat USA. Developed for the fighters, by the fighters. Engineered specifically for today's top MMA fighters. It's not what you want, it's what you need.
That's what I need. This is what I need. For more info, check us out at 4OunceFightGear.com. Bringing it four ounces at a time. Welcome back to Combat USA. Again, Adam Sandoval here with my friend uh, Phil Jackson. Known Phil for uh, many years, and uh, he's a good guy, funny guy, and uh, knows his MMA, most importantly. How long have you been watching these fights uh, for Combat USA? For Combat USA, about six and a half years. Yeah, it's been a long time. Since the beginning. It's been a long time. The guy's been to all the fights. He uh, just judged fights. He's done a lot of, a lot of amazing things in, in the mixed martial arts world, and uh, continuing it here by uh, co-hosting me today on Combat USA. Definitely. So, thanks a lot, Phil. I appreciate you being here with us today. My pleasure. All right. So, let's talk about uh, the Combat USA January 6th fight. We've got the lower bracket fights. These are all still 100% professional fights, but these are the new and up-and-comers. These guys aren't fighting for the $10,000. They're not fighting for the big diamond ring. They're fighting to make a name for themselves, to prove why they should be in next season on the top, fighting for the big money, the big fame, the trip to Tap Out Research and Development Center, all the fun stuff that comes with being on the upper brackets of Combat USA. Absolutely. All right, talking about the rest of the main card on January 6th, all these professional fighters out there looking to make their names, 145 pounds. We've got Jason the Aphrodisiac Genac, uh, strong striker from Peshtigo, Wisconsin, fights from the Dungeon Fight Team. And uh, this guy's going to make his mark, and he's going to try to do it against Mr. Uh, we have Josh Steary fighting from Madison, Wisconsin, the chosen few. Josh is also another exciting fighter looking to make his mark. The guy's Absolutely. got... Incredible hands, good sprawl, of course, like all the chosen few fighters, good wrestling. Very well-rounded. Yeah, he's a well-rounded fighter. At 180, 155 pounds, excuse me, we have got Mr... Jason Trunks. Uh, he's fighting from Shark Bite MMA. Now, Shark Bite's an interesting gym in the mix. It's the only fighter they've got in the mix, as far as I understand. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see how they do. Um, you know, they're, 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 they're a tough team. they got some good fighters there. And uh, it's going to see. It's going to be cool to see if Jason can actually bring Shark Bite into the upper levels of uh, mixed martial arts next year. I wouldn't. I wouldn't doubt it if Jason uh, impressed a couple people out there. Absolutely. And he's going to be fighting Mr. Tyler Hellenbrand. Now Tyler Hellenbrand is one of these other chosen few fighters. Except this guy is just heavy, heavy hands. Uh, I've seen this guy. He's fought for Combat USA a few times. We can take a look at some of the past footage. But this guy hits hard. He's in your face, nonstop action. That's going to be an exciting fight. One of the most exciting strikers I've seen in a while. Yeah, he's going to try to make his mark here. Moving on to 170 pounds, we've got Mr. David White from last season. He's fighting out of Appleton, Wisconsin, Fox Valley Grappling. Uh, he blew his knee out last year, um, but he's looking to come back. Yeah, I think he'll try to make a mark. Uh, you know, he had an unfortunate circumstance. You never like to see a fight end like that. Uh, Tony Rook did a takedown, his knee came dislocated, but he's going to look to uh, rectify that this season with Combat USA. And But he's going to have to do so against Mr. Tim Hollick, is one of my favorite fighters I've been watching coming up. This guy, talk about a rangy striker. I'm a big striker fan. I love to watch the guy strike. And this guy will stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody and throw those hands. Very impressive on his feet. He is, man. Talk about a rangy guy. And a big guy at 175, 170 pounds. This guy could easily fight 185. Moving on to 185 pounds, we got Mr. Zach Browder. Fighting uh, out of ACS, mm -hmm. Racine, Wisconsin. Those guys are tough. Reputable gym. Reputable gym. We'll see if he can put his name amongst the top with the other guys fighting out of ACS. Well, he's got a lot of competition out there, but... Well, he's going to have to fight Ken Richards. Ken Richards trains with uh, another very tough guy, a 2010 champion, 205-pound champion. Uh, last year, Caleb Nelson. And uh, if you know anything about Caleb Nelson, he's strong, he's in your face, he's always wide open. And uh, you got to believe that Ken Richards is going to have some of that rub off on him with training with him every day. Definitely. So uh, Ken Richards, Zach Browder, hard to say. We're going to find out January 6th at Oneida Casino, Green Bay, Wisconsin. All right, well, let's talk a little bit about Illinois before we leave this deal here. Uh, Illinois is bringing some incredible fighters to the table this year. They, uh, they're really going to give Wisconsin a challenge. Uh, you know, it's ruckus MMA, and uh, these guys have brought the best fighters Illinois has to offer to the table. Absolutely. Very crisp fighters, uh, very ready to fight. Yeah, I was really impressed. We went down there to shoot them and, and, and film uh, their guys and, and see what they're all about. And watching some of these guys uh, shadow box and roll and spar and, and hit the bags, uh, impressive, Phil. Well, they have something to prove. I mean, they are going up against our champions, so. 
Yeah, they're going to go, the champions of Illinois are going to go against the champions of Wisconsin. We're going to find out which state has the better gyms, the better fighters, the better camps. And uh, we're going to see a lot about their attitudes as well. Let's move on to the technique of the week. Hi, I'm John White Trash Friedler from Neutral Ground Academy in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I'm here with Tyler. And today I'd like to show you the Kimura sweep from half guard. All right, so I'm in Tyler's, I'm oh, sorry, Tyler's in my half guard. And most of the time, well, the way this happens is my knee's up like this and he's punching it down with his hand. Exactly, so I, I see the, the cue for regular Kimura, like this. And I'd like to be able to yank this out and catch him in a, in a kind of a weak Kimura here. But he's smart and he hides it under his stomach. So I can't get the Kimura anymore. But what he gains in saving his arm from the Kimura sweep he lacks in, in base here over this way. And what I mean by that is, I'm gonna take my leg that's inside, use that to punch his butt up as my, my arms on his kimura turn his head down, backwards roll, shoulder roll, and put, him on, uh, put myself on top. Okay, so again, it usually happens from here. He's pushing, get the kimura grip, try to yank it out. He's not letting me have it. So now I'm going to abuse his, the momentum of my knee in, in between his legs to put his butt up, his head down. That's the Kimura sweep from the half guard. As always, thank you for joining Combat USA. I'm Adam Sandoval, your host, Mr. Phil Jackson. Thanks for having me. My co-host today and hopefully another day. You did a great job here today, Phil. We appreciate you being here to help us out. Um, as always, you can check us out on Facebook. That's uh, facebook.com slash combatusa. Check us out at combatusa.net. And also uh, follow us on Twitter. Look us up. We're out there. We're bringing the information on the best mixed martial arts fighters in each state. We're following them every year, state by state, creating champions that you want to see fight. And uh, thank you for joining. We're Combat USA. We are MMA. And always, we're here to stay. Combat USA, bringing you MMA, looking state to state for the top eight here on prime time, putting it all on the line for this one chance, for this one moment to stand up and show.